This is Pastor Randy, and I'm glad that you're joining me for today's message, The Holy Spirit as Comforter. This is part of our In the Third Person series. Our scripture today is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so for now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented, and as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. May the Lord bless you as you read his word. In this sermon series, we're looking at the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so far, we've seen that the Spirit teaches us by calling to mind all the things that Jesus said, and it glorifies Jesus. And then we saw how, like the wind, the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is unseen but powerful and gives us the power to live the life God would have us live. Last time, we explored the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our times of weakness when he intercedes for us and speaks on our behalf. And it's at those times when we're weakest that we need the ministry of the Holy Spirit that we're going to talk about today, the Holy Spirit as comforter. Jesus at the Last Supper talked about sending the Holy Spirit to help his disciples, and he used a word that we've been talking about the last few times that's been translated as advocate or counselor, helper, companion, and friend. And it's also been translated by the King James Version of the Bible to mean comforter. We live in anxious times. 51% of Americans describe themselves as anxious. We need a comforter, a calming influence in our lives. Last year, I did an entire sermon series on the topic, Keep Calm and Carry On. Even before the pandemic, which has clearly increased the problem, nearly 50 million Americans felt the effects of a variety of anxiety disorders. It was the number one problem among women and second only to alcohol and drug abuse among men. We deal with anxiety about the world around us, the divisiveness we see, the violence, the war, and calamities such as hurricanes and famine. We deal with personal issues that produce anxiety too, health problems and marriage and family problems, unemployment or problems at work. Max Lucado says, anxiety is not a sign of weakness, but anxiety does weaken us. It takes our sleep, it numbs our minds. It clutters our heart with dread. Yet, he says, help is here. You have at your disposal the surest antidote for trepidation, the Holy Spirit. He is the calming presence of God in the world today. In John chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus told his disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. I imagine a child overcome with fear about doing something new, performing in public, or meeting someone new, or going to the doctor for the first time, and their mother stooping and whispering in their ear, it's okay, I'm with you, I won't let anything happen to you, don't be afraid. That's the comforting ministry of the Holy Spirit. This ministry of the Holy Spirit was symbolized at the baptism of Jesus when the Holy Spirit descended upon him as a dove. Jesus was just beginning his ministry. He was preparing to set out on a journey that would require him to give up his home and become as one who had no place to lay his head, to teach and call disciples, to heal the sick and endure the attacks of those who were, thre who were threatened by his message. To launch that ministry, Jesus came to his kinsman, John the Baptist, in Matthew 3, 13 to 17, is where we read about that encounter. Then Jesus came from the Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John, but John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? And Jesus replied, let it be so for now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. 
Then John consented, and as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Even now we see that image of a dove as a symbol of peace. The Holy Spirit in scriptures was described as a fire, a wind, oil in a lamp, a river surging with life, and at Jesus' baptism as a dove. Imagine how reassuring it was to the human side of Jesus as he began this difficult journey to hear those words of affirmation as he began. This is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. It's as if to say, I'm with you on this journey. You're not alone. You've chosen the right path. Throughout this sermon series, I've spoken of the Holy Spirit in the masculine form using the pronoun he. And that's because I want to emphasize that the Holy Spirit is a person, not an it. But the fact is, the Holy Spirit has no gender, and the Hebrew word for spirit is, in fact, a feminine word. Historically, the image of a dove has been a symbol of motherhood and nurturing. And that's probably because doves have the unique ability to produce their own milk. And God was the first one, by the way, to choose to use the image of motherhood to describe himself. In Isaiah 66, 13, God promises, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. There are many times in which our spirits are troubled and anxious, and we long for the comforting presence of a loving mother. And that's the need that the Holy Spirit meets for us. As a history teacher, I have many times read stories of how men who are dying on the battlefield have cried out for their mother. And I understand that phenomenon. When I was a child and had a problem, it was my mother that I most often went to for comfort and encouragement. When I was a child, I was afraid sometimes to sleep at night, and my mom got me a bookmark with the 23rd Psalm on it with the picture of Jesus as a good shepherd. And it had a cross that would glow in the dark. And she gave me this to remind me that he is with me And because he's with me, I had nothing to fear. The fruit of the Spirit, Paul writes in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, includes kindness and gentleness and patience, characteristics that a good mother has. Could you use more kindness and gentleness and patience in your life? Satan majors in spreading fear and distress Dread, doubt, divisiveness, anxiety, hopelessness. And many of our sources of information, TV and cable news, social media and such, exacerbate the problem by focusing on the stuff that shocks us or scares us or makes us angry. They have discovered that this stuff sells, it gets viewers, and therefore turns a profit. But it's also a major reason why we are so anxious and divided and worried. What do you do about it? Well, you can turn off the news and turn to God for peace. Ask the Spirit to help you. Ask for the heavenly dove to descend upon you and give you peace. Another possible help for our troubled times is found in Ephesians 5, 18 to 20, which says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to God, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul prescribes thankfulness and worship for our condition, celebration, not inebriation. Be filled with the Spirit, not with alcohol. Recently, I heard a country song that insisted, everything's better with beer, But that's not true, is it? Max Lucado observes, many people numb themselves, if not with liquor, with long hours of work, bouts of shopping, or hours of playing. But happy hours do not make us happy. Our problems are still there, after all. Instead of filling yourself with liquid painkillers or filling your hours with distractions, be filled with the Spirit. The verb tense implies it's a constant thing. Keep on being filled with the Spirit. Constant worship clears the debris from our hearts. When I was sick with the flu at the beginning of this year, I reminded myself that God was with me on that unwanted journey. And one day, I began to sing to myself 
in my, sing in my mind this song of praise to God, not out loud, but in my heart. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul rejoice. Take joy, my king, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. And I began to repeat those words over and over in my heart. And I discovered that I began to feel better and had a sensation come over me of being at peace. Sing and make music in your hearts, Paul said to the Lord. Paul didn't prescribe a treatment that he wouldn't use himself. When he and Silas were beaten and shackled in a dark Philippian jail, Acts 16, 25 to 26 reports that at midnight they sang and the other prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Isn't it time that your chains came loose? that the storm of anxiety within you was calmed. Remember, you know the master of the wind who calmed the angry waves with his command. Ask him to speak against your storms. Don't worry, worship. David knew anxious times. He writes in Psalm 34, verse 4 to 7, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Last time we talked about what the Holy Spirit does for us before God in our times of weakness. He speaks for us. But what can we do? Read the Bible, especially the promises of God and the accounts of the mighty acts and compassion of God. One of my favorites is this promise found in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. I'm convinced that nothing can separate us ever from the love of God. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Meditate on the promises of God. And... Sing or listen to a favorite song that lifts your spirits and calms your fears like I did. And remember, the Holy Spirit inhabits your praise, is the mother heart of God, the heavenly dove that will comfort you. So pray in the Spirit, remembering the psalmist who wrote in Psalm 55, 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Or remember what Peter wrote in 1 Peter 5, 7, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Remember God's promise in Isaiah 66, 13. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. And that is just another one of the ministries and of the work of the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. Let us pray. Comfort your people, O God. We are anxious and harried like sheep without a shepherd. Help us to remember that we have a shepherd a good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep, who pursues the lost and brings them home, who binds up their wounds, who will never leave us or forsake us. Fill us with your spirit that we might have your peace that passes all understanding. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. May the Lord comfort you. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I hope you'll join me next week as we continue this series in the third person.